All right, cool. It's, it's tough following someone as, as, uh, as great as Tony. I've been out to Ding Darling, and their trail is fantastic if you haven't seen it. Um, thank you, CHNEP. Thank you, Moran, for uh, having me here today. Uh, I'll be speaking to you as an educator, and so unlike some of the other presenters you've seen today, I actually have to walk around my classroom, so uh, I try to engage the folks in the back, so, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and to do that, uh, let's look at my first slide here. It's my title slide. I'm David Green uh, from Florida Gulf Coast University in the Department of Marine and Ecological Sciences. And I'd like you to take a look at the word cloud up top there. The larger that word is, uh, the more times it appears in a body of text, and the smaller the word, uh, the fewer times it appears. And some of those small ones we can't see so well. Uh, but take 20, 20 seconds here real quick and, and choose a word, and then I'm going to pick on some people. All right, everybody got a word? Wasn't quite 20 seconds, but we've got time in, in, at control here. All right, Brenda, I know you. I'm going to pick on you. Okay. What word did you pick out? Excur excursion. And why did you pick out excursion? Because I love excursions. All right. I couldn't have, I couldn't have picked a better person. I take my classes on uh, field excursions, and the first one we go on is at crew. Uh, what you're looking at here is, is my course syllabus in a word cloud. So every word appears in my, in my uh, course syllabus, or in the schedule at least, is in this word cloud. All right, let's get another word. I don't know anybody over here, I don't think. So what word did you choose? Cypress. All right. And why did you choose Cypress? I just like cypress domes. Don't we all, right? It's my favorite ecosystem in Florida, one of them anyway. Uh, so when we go to Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary, obviously, uh, those are the kinds of ecosystems we see. EO, because I don't know what it means. Ah, EO. Any, any uh, guesses what EO is referring to? Dr. Mitch? EO Wilson. E.O. Wilson, and I call him the grandfather of biodiversity in my class, okay? All right, so this is just a, kind of a quick example of the way uh, you can teach differently, right? It's, it's different from uh, when I was a student using Dr. Mitch's second edition of the Wetlands book at that time. Uh, teaching's different. Uh, as you saw from Tony's presentation, we can use technology uh, in meaningful ways in and out of the classroom. So with that in mind, uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about how I organize my classes with this thought. Uh, as a student, wouldn't it be cool if your projects had more value uh, than just a letter grade? And what I mean by that is how many projects did you do as a student? You might have got an A on them, might have got a B on your papers. And that was the end of its life, right? It ended up on mom's refrigerator if you were lucky or ended up in your, in your closet and you never looked at it again. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about service learning projects today where student projects actually serve community needs. So uh, I quickly mentioned my class. Uh, a little background here. Most of the students in the class I'm talking about are general education, freshman level, first semester, non-science majors. Uh, in other words, they don't want to be sitting in the seats they're sitting in. All right? they did, they've had bad science experiences. Uh, they're probably not friendly with wet walks through cypress domes and, and things like that. So how do you reach that kind of a student? That's my biggest challenge. All right, so they're gen ed, non-science majors. Uh, and I, if I could retitle my course, I'd call it A Journey Down the Corkscrew Watershed. Uh, that's the local watershed near FGCU. Uh, you see the blue arrow at the top left and then the watershed. Uh, immediately adjacent to that. Uh, you can't see the red dot so well on this screen, uh, but we start at the top of that watershed at the Crew Land and Water Trust sites, uh, and then our students travel, like I've mentioned, as raindrops, and we follow that sheet flowing water uh, across the landscape just the way the water flows uh, from the interior of the peninsula out to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, along the way, we stop at, at Crew at Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary, uh, we uh, visit the headwaters of the Imperial River at a place called Bonita Nature Place. Uh, and then we work our way downstream to our Vester Marine Labs in the mangroves, go canoeing, and Barefoot Beach and see the barrier islands in, in Gulf of Mexico. And that's the backbone of my course. It's experiential. Uh, there's labs and active learning embedded for the students. Uh, nationally, this, uh, this course has gained some recognition with the CENSOR program, which is, uh, stands for Science Education for New Civic Engagements and Responsibilities. Uh, I'm part of a team at FGCU that, that's working on this CENSOR program. Uh, another team member, Dr. Marguerite Forrest, is in attendance today, so I'd like to acknowledge her real quick. <clears throat> 
Um, as a student, then, I have to explain to them, this is going to be a different class. We're not going to be doing a lot of PowerPoint lecturing. Uh, you're not going to be passively sitting in my class. You're going to be actively working. Uh, and I incorporate a wide range of tools to help them succeed, and I give them this little flow chart to think about how to approach preparing for my course. Uh, but what I'd like to highlight for you in this presentation is, is box five there, uh, the civic engagement box, which reads, connecting knowledge gained in this course to real life scenarios uh, by serving the community. So they're going to be using higher order thinking skills uh, and producing content. So if they can use content that they've learned and then teach other people about that content, they're using higher order thinking skills and hopefully retaining some of that knowledge moving forward. My course focus on a guiding question. Everything we do relates to this in some way. Uh, and I'll read it real quick. How can tomorrow's generations of all Southwest Florida inhabitants continue to benefit from the natural goods and services a coastal watershed uh, provides by better understanding or taking the time to better understand our role as citizens uh, today? So at the end of 15 week semester, um, my students need to understand uh, what environmental sustainability is all about, uh, the ecology, the ecosystems we find, how hum humans benefit from coastal watersheds, how we influence these watershed areas, uh, what civic engagement's all about, what a role of a, of a member of the community means, and then the connectedness of all these main academic concept, concepts uh, with their daily lives and future decision-making processes. They are going to be making decisions in a few short years, so it's important to connect that for them. Uh, and so then the goal of civic engagement projects then is to relate uh, these opportunities, these projects that have more value than just a letter grade, uh, to that guiding question and course content while simultaneously giving back to the same organizations uh, that have supported my class. So we partner with Crew, we partner uh, with Audubon, we partner with my other partners up and down the watershed. And so not only are we doing um, projects that benefit the community, uh, we're linked with the, with the community partners who have already uh, supported my class through field excursions, guest speaker roles, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so I feel pretty good about that. Um, in a class of 30 students, Five hours each is 150 hours that these students are giving back. 10 hours, that's 300 hours that these students are giving back each and every class. So that's kind of, that kind of data can be, uh, can be quantified and, and that looks good at the end of the day. So what, um, what is my goal here today? Um, I have some pretty good prototypes and if I have some time in a moment, I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you. Uh, I want to grow this, I want to grow my partnerships, I want to expand the range. Uh, our university certainly has students coming down from Charlotte County. Uh, we serve uh, Hendry, Glade, Charlotte, and, uh, and Collier and Lee counties. So uh, I, I really want to expand opportunities for students and for community partners. So if there's ways we can partner uh, as organizations and, and, and with me, uh, I'd like to make that happen for all of us. Uh, what can my students do? Um, they can ground truth um, trails and data and that sort of thing with GPS units. Uh, they can create a wide range of educational content. So what we just saw at Ding Darling, uh, my students are creating video clips like that and, and linking to QR codes as well. That's the sort of thing that they're, they're good at. They're uh, digital natives. We're digital immigrants, like you saw with Tony's slide, right? So uh, that's the world they've grown up in. Uh, some of my science students are, uh, need the opportunity to assist with data collection. Uh, you need them, they need the experience. That's one thing I like to highlight. Uh, I'll show you the interactive map in a, in a couple seconds here, uh, and you can uh, add layers. I just spoke to Pete Quashis about adding uh, potential snook uh, fish uh, data layer into the map. Uh, or other service projects, right? It doesn't have to be something I'm showing today. It could be any service. Our students are required to earn 80 hours of service learning time for graduation. Uh, we might as well make that meaningful hours uh, and not just sort of haphazard. Meaningful for both students and partners. All right, so let's, uh, let's interact with my map if I can pull it up. Maureen, how much time do I have? A couple minutes? The classroom these days is in my hand. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll walk around and I've got the interactive map right here. So if you're a visitor to a place like the Bonita Nature Place then, uh, the map you see up here is printed out in poster format and displayed on a trailhead kiosk. Uh, and there's a QR code that you could scan with your smartphone. Uh, when you do that, that same map will appear in, in your hand. 
Uh, and so if you tap on features, um, information pops up. So, all right, so we're scrolling in and we start to see features like trails and, and buildings. Uh, and if you click on that, you can go ahead and touch anything. Let's see what he chooses. All right, so he's chosen the main uh, exhibit house of the Benita Nature Place. And inside that are several video clips. Uh, you can see a list here. Uh, their projects then, like this one has an introductory video, an interview with a city councilwoman, uh, and then the importance of the corkscrew watershed. Uh, those are multiple group projects then, their video clips uh, educate the local public. So if you were going to the nature place, you'd have that video in the palm of your hand. Uh, other information that you see on it is tree data. So if you click on one of the green circles that you see, uh, you can see tree species data. So the height of the tree, uh, the, the canopy information, and that sort of thing. Pictures could be added, its location. So real data in an urban setting of, of tree canopy coverage. Uh, um, so here we go. We've got uh, student projects then that are serving the community's needs. In this case, it's a budget-limited nature center. There are no rangers. There's virtually no budget. Um, and so they really need our students' help. And, and it's provided some good benefits to them. So the interactive map is student-created. Uh, it shows trails and features, uh, contains education content. Uh, but we can do the same thing for your organization. So if you see something on here uh, that is interesting to you, uh, let me know, and we will uh, we'll go from there and, and make a partnership. So then the question is, does it work? Do students learn from this? You know, we're, we're all benefiting, but what about the students? Uh, so I'll show you a little bit of data today. Uh, this is a tool we use called the uh, Student Evaluation of Learning Gain. So what they feel they've learned in the course. So think back to those uh, guiding questions and the things that the students, the concepts the students had to learn about. Sustainability, ecosystem structure and function, goods and services, uh, the relationship, and then the uh, real world issues, connections. Uh, the bar graph, the left, on the left, the dark bars is the student responses to those questions at the beginning of the semester coming into the course, and then the lighter blue bars on the right side are the post question. So leaving the course, this is how they feel about that. Uh, certainly I can, uh, this complements other data I collect like exam questions, you know. Uh, but students feel at the end of their academic journey down the corkscrew watershed um, that they understand these concepts better, and this kind of data uh, helps show that. Okay, uh, future plans. Uh, I hope to uh, continue. We are doing some of that QR code work that you saw at Ding Darling. We're uh, doing that with uh, places like Crew and, and Bonita Nature Place. Um, I would like to uh, add to the map, like I just said, by growing partnerships with uh, regional partners outside of the corkscrew watershed to provide opportunities for other partners and students. And I really want to do a better job of adding ed uh, data layers. Uh, uh, primarily water quality information from the top of the watershed uh, down. Uh, so quickly here are some uh, acknowledgments. There's uh, too many people to, uh, to recognize, but I do want to um, mention the sensor team, Dr. Forrest, uh, Dr. Susan Cooper in the College of Ed. Uh, I mentioned Marguerite earlier as my GIS mentor in many ways. Uh, Jessica Ray is our director. Uh, she has a day of service learning and civic engagement. She's got a database that all community partners can add their information to, so a student can go on online and, and click and find your organization uh, relatively quickly. Uh, my Straw Hat Brigade, students that are uh, not in my classes anymore and for some reason want to continue working with me, uh, join my Straw Hat Brigade, and I have a whole team of students then that serve as uh, supervisors and leaders overseeing some of these projects communication facilitators between you and me. Uh, certainly all my community partners, I, there's a couple in the audience today, uh, crew uh, in particular, and then I uh, couldn't do any of this work without my students as partners, so uh, I have to, have to highlight them and thank them as well. All right, there's my information. We'll uh, hopefully show the map to you in a little bit so you get a better feel. If not, um, you can certainly reach out to me and I'll be happy to, to show you what I can out in the hallway or something. All right, thank you, Marianne, and I'll take some questions if you have them. All right. All right, and I'll bring it up here. Will you take your students outside of Lee County? For the service learning projects, they can absolutely work um, 
outside of the county. I, if you're up here in, say, Charlotte area, uh, I have a number of students that, that commute from, from Charlotte County to take classes at FGCU. So if we could uh, partner students that live up here with organizations that are housed in Charlotte County, uh, we could certainly make that happen, absolutely. Absolutely, Collier County, yep. And there's lots of opportunities in Collier because we have existing relationships with the Botanical Garden, with the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Um, so there's lots of opportunities there. All right, any other questions I don't see? Oh, I see one way in the back. Is that a question? What is my biggest challenge in the classroom getting students to buy in? Um, overcoming their fears of science, right? They've had, um, they've had some, if, if they had good science experiences in high school, middle school, they'd be studying science uh, as a major, and they're not doing that. Um, and so that's the biggest challenge, right, on day one is making this course and the concepts we cover uh, not scary, but relevant to them and to their lives. And, um, that's something that we can accomplish uh, with some, some good activities on the first day, I think. Brenda? Fortunately, CREW has been one of the um, receiving community partners, and we have really benefited from this. We have been having a relationship with David for three years, four? It seems like a long time. We've been dating a long time. Um, but this has been an awesome experience for us. We've gotten a lot, the students, when you take these non-science majors and you give them the experiential treatment of being in the field, connected to a partner, it, all barriers are, are taken down and they learn so much. So I know David's here for you to talk to, but as a community partner, if you want to talk to me to see how we have benefited, I'm available as well. And thank you, David, for everything you've done for us. Thanks, Brenda. Appreciate it.